You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Resilience is remarkable. Mary Walden, founder of Change Therapy, reveals the power of resilience on Big Waves, Strong Boat. Listen as Mary guides her listeners on a transformational journey, weaving inner self-love with learning to share that love with others and defining the role resilience plays in achieving both. So please welcome the host of Big Waves, Strong Boat, Mary Walden. Welcome to Big Wave Strong Boat. This thing called life, who are we and what is meaningful? Last week, we talked a little bit about stuff and how we've gotten weighted down by all the material things we buy and collect and shove into crannies and drawers. And we talked about how this is being addressed by books and shows and organizational gurus like Peter Walsh and Marie Kondo who see and describe the connection between how people feel in their minds and their bodies about stuff and the burden of having so much stuff. And their great contribution is the path to the relief and the mental calmness that comes from freeing oneself from the clutches of stuff. We even tiptoed a little bit into a bit of a spiritual discussion the power of attending to spiritual and the divine part of life, the who am I in connection to humanity, not alone in my hurt and challenge and confusion, just deeply human, feeling what other people feel. And we looked at values and how to figure out what our values are in a vast array of all different kinds of emphasis that we see on social media and finding our way. This is such a core topic that no matter what your age, you might be thinking or feeling like, hey, shouldn't I know this by now? Why do I feel so untethered? Why do I feel so scattered? Or maybe I'm just projecting my own feelings. I love this kind of discussion. And I'm really not sure how many people these days are sitting around talking with their friends about all this. But what I do know is that there are countless people like Gabrielle Bernstein and Tony Robbins and Oprah and Tara Brock and Jack Cornfield, and they're all spreading varying messages with themes of self ex- self-acceptance and self-reliance, self-discovery, and healing through faith, because people are hungry for answers to all this suffering and, and the confusion they feel on the daily. This suffering and confusion may not get to clinical levels, meaning most likely it's feelings of sadness and anxiety and worry. They don't keep you in your bed every day, but maybe sometimes. The turmoil isn't so great that you can't work most of the time. The struggle isn't so all-encompassing that it keeps you from being with your friends and from feeling totally alone, usually. But it must be happening. Otherwise, no one would be paying attention to any of these folks. So who are you? Are you your thoughts? Are you your actions? Are you your external stuff? Your car, your house, your job, your friends? And how do you figure all that out? Tonight, we're going to explore that discussion again and um, maybe take it even in a different turn. And joining me again, thankfully so, to explore this is my awesome on-air producer, Dean Miner. Welcome, Dean. Hey, Mary. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm good. <laughs> it's cold there, huh? 
it is really cold here. You know, and they start when they start talking in real feels and wind chills, uh, <laughs> or minus twenty and minus thirty. I'm like, what does it really matter? What really matters when you get matter. to a certain point? It's just freaking cold. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's so that's not who we really are, Mary. That's we're not, not cold. who <laughs> we're not cold. You're only you're only cold if you if you can't put on another layer. Um, that's just what we're experiencing. The we who right. is I. Yeah, that's right. The okay. collective we I. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are back again to talk about this really intense topic, and I don't know. Um, uh, I, I love this. And I know that, uh, so many of the young women I see in my practice are exploring this. And honestly, women of all ages exploring kind of, okay, where am I? How do I find my groove? How do I make sense of all this around us and around me? And, um, you know, last week you mentioned a book that I know you really enjoy the new earth. And it had been years since I picked up that book. And um, I kind of reacquainted myself with that. And uh, I was reminded how much how much wisdom is in that book. And um, I don't know. I know maybe you want to say a few words about it because I know that you really do like that book. I have some things to say, but I don't want to do all the talking. Oh, well, it's your show. So you're the <laughs> Uh, I, I honestly, uh, I, it just really spoke to me in a way that, uh, made sense, uh, about, you know, the ego and the egoic mind and, uh, you know, uh, the, the thing that I think speaks to what we're talking about as, uh, as far as who am I, it's when, uh, Eckhart, was talking about I heard a, a speech from him about how he wrote the book and uh, he was having a very difficult time he was suicidal actually yeah. and he woke up one morning and said like I cannot live with myself anymore and he said well who is the I and who is mm -hmm. myself you know right. so it was yes. that realization of that there must be two people or two perceived bodies that are talking so that just rang a bell with me and it's 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 continued in sort of trying to understand who is the voice in my head and who whose head is it <laughs> right right and we oftentimes i think one of the things he points out in that book is that we oftentimes think in the mental construct of likes and dislikes uh kind of in order to ground our sense of understanding who we are. And he actually says, okay, well, that's really not who you are. But I got to say, I know that when someone is feeling so kind of, you know, I used this word earlier, untethered and unbounded and, and not in sort of a blissful way, but in sort of a floating and uh, confused way, I think it actually can be gr a grounding place to start, you know, to kind of explore, um, you know, those more tangible elements of oneself. And I even had a patient once years ago, she told me that she wished that there was an encyclopedia devoted to her. And if <laughs> she, yeah, and if she had a question about herself, she could simply just go look it up and get the answer right there. And then she'd know, oh, okay, this is me. And, you know, I always thought that that was just such a a, a moment of wisdom and also a, a deep moment of suffering, right? To say, okay, I really don't know myself, and I wish there was some sort of external thing to uh, tell me who I am. But you know, that's the part of it, though. It's the thinking and the ruminating, and the questioning and the feeling ungrounded. That that really is the suffering that um, I think Eckhart is, you know, speaking to in that book and. Um, and so many people are talking about these days. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I like your patient. I wish that you could Google, you know, the answers to yourself. Right. right. I know. I wondered when I was talking about the encyclopedia, I wonder, are there listeners who don't know what an encyclopedia is because it's so retro? Uh, we do have to plug in the Google word instead. Uh -huh. Um, 
All right. Well, we're going to continue our discussion uh, when we get get back here. Uh, you're listening to Big Waves Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to Be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to Be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with Dean Minert. I want to remind you to give us a call at 1-866-451-1451. Also, as I do each week, I post a list of resources that you might find helpful and interesting on Facebook at Big Wave Strong Boat. So take a look at that. We'd love your comments on that Facebook page. And then also, uh, if you feel more comfortable emailing us, that'd be fantastic. Uh, Big Wave Strong Boat at gmail.com. So, Dean, before we went to the break, we were talking about uh, the new earth and also uh, just how much suffering uh, people have around thinking and reviewing and questioning and not really feeling in touch with themselves. And even I I know in that book, um, Eckhart Tolle kind of came to this moment of saying, you know, so much suffering that I'm not sure I really want to be here anymore, and uh, which led to a, a deep uh, searching and, and, um, an exploration for him that yielded that incredible, uh, book that really has impacted so many. And at the end of the day, we still come back to this notion that, you know, we, uh, he, he speaks to this, this notion that, you know, we can get sucked into our thoughts and into believing that we are our thoughts when really that's not the case. Well, it just makes me wonder as a non-pro, like, well, who is creating these thoughts then if it's not us? You know what I mean? So I understand that from the work that I'm listening to uh, other authors, I told you I was listening to The Untethered Soul, but, and I understand that the voice in your head and this, but who is who is the puppeteer of that voice? You know, I mean, it's so easy to get distracted to think like that's you. So boy, they're smart, whoever it is. Right. Well, you know, I think when in the untethered soul and in other, um, you know, in points in Buddhism and, and even in that new earth, that, that theme that we are not our thoughts repeating again and again. Um, and, and to your point, that they not be who it depends on where they have come from. If you've decided what your thoughts are, if you've decided that, okay, I'm going to be intentional with my thinking by using mindfulness. And even with, um, you know, uh, in the Dalai Lama's book in, uh, he talks about a path to happiness. Um, 
that you can train your mind to be happy. And we're going to talk about examples of how to do that because, you know, that that is a very simply stated thing. But it is an important thing to to raise your awareness of where did those thoughts come from? Does it come from media and advertising? Does it come from your family of origin? You know, maybe a message that you got 30, 40 or more years ago of your self-worth or how things were viewed in your household. If things were viewed very hierarchically or uh, comparatively, maybe you always compared to your brother or the kid down the street or, you know, some other, um, you know, person that was deemed, quote unquote, better at, than you are or uh, more handsome, more smart, whatever, funnier. Um, you know, these kinds of messages that we get, especially when we're young, can really hold on and, um, and sustain over time. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess that's the pain that we have to sort of deal with and let go in order to sort of transcend. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why we talk so much about mindfulness, to be able to tune into what's happening in your mind, what those thoughts are, and look at them with curiosity instead of just accepting uh, those thoughts as facts. And, you know, and maybe even taking it one step further to move to a place of um, really uh, actively, and this is a tough, I, I, don't, I don't like this word, but more controlling your thoughts, you being more in the driver's seat of the thoughts that you allow to come into your mind. And when thoughts come in, you question them rather than just sort of running with them and following the emotional response that you might have to those thoughts. So thinking about, uh, you know, a self-judgment or something like that can really kind of bring, bring your energy down, bring your mood down. And we start by, you know, we want to observe our thoughts and the sensations in our bodies, noticing what's coming up, observing with curiosity. What are we holding on to from the past? What thoughts, you know, continue to repeat? Notice them rather than attach to them. Yes. Well, all right. I have a lot of questions in that. Okay. So uh, if we are not our thoughts, and I know I said like, well, who is the thoughts? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get to a place where it's like any thought that comes in, I have to be thinking about and, and, you know, like judging it and saying, Mm -hmm. is this a good thought? Is that a bad thought? I mean, that seems like you're not living life, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, one of the things that we say, um, as I think I've uh, let people know a few weeks ago, I am trained in a type of therapy called uh, dialectical behavior therapy. And one of the techniques that we talk about um, in that therapy is being a guard at the palace gate. So you do want to attend to your thoughts like your, your mind is the palace and your attention is the guard at the gate, only letting in thoughts that serve you. And again, the thoughts that don't serve you, attending to them with curiosity and separation, right? And wondering, okay, where did this come from? So initially, it can be very taxing. Once you tune in and start noticing, okay, here's what's been going on. Here's the thoughts that have been coming in and they've been impacting me long before I put my attention on them. It is very active and is very honestly, exhausting to begin with. But ultimately, um, you'll be creating a habit, a different way, a, a new habit, a habit that serves you, that really then becomes less deliberate. I got you. And I, my point to be clear is, I can sort of, you know, introspect and uh, navel gaze for a while. Uh, it's just like if I have a thought, it's like, well, is that a good thought? Or, you know, and I mean, it, mm-hmm. that could take me on a place where I assume as the muscle gets stronger and you get better at, you know, sort of pushing through that stuff, it gets easier. But I could right. see how it would be a really slow plodding path. And I would get very frustrated and just say, all right, I'm just going to listen to my voice because, you know, it's not worth, it's too much work. Right. So the, the port, po- point that I would um, kind of a- attach to of what you said was, you're talking about evaluating the thought as good or bad. And that's really not the goal. The goal is to notice the thought. And is that a thought 
is that thought effective or not? Is that thought lifting you up or bringing you down? Is that thought lending Which to your better. goals? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> It's so easy to get into that framework. We live in a world of comparisons. We live in a world of right or wrong and good and bad. And it is so difficult to break that habit. But at the end of the day, that's judgment. And we're going to talk about judgment when we come back. You're I'll listening. be here. You'll be here. Excellent. <laughs> You're listening to Big Wave Strong Vote. Don't any of you guys leave too. Join Dean and I after the break on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 30 100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with Dean Minard. Again, I'm going to give you a little reminder. Please give us a call at one 866 451 or find us on Facebook at Big Wave Strong Boat or send us an email at bigwavestrongboat at gmail.com. Uh, Dean, before the break, I, you were asking some really important questions about... <laughs> Really, how to differentiate and how to um, not get caught up really in that uh, sort of comparative mind because it is it's so attractive, isn't it? Yes, very attractive. Yeah, I mean, it's it's intoxicating. It is. And it's habitual. Right. Because it's repeated again and again. We're always talking about better, best the, the, you know, people on the top, the champion, all of that, we're always comparing. And, you know, I think what might be helpful is we can actually go through and talk about some exercises that you can do to train your brain for happiness and really develop a full sense of being um, and starting with your thoughts. So you want to okay. do that? Yeah, I'm in. Okay, cool. So the first thing is, um, to, to differentiate between ruminating and problem solving. So do you know the difference between those two, Dean? Well, I, I might. But <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> well, ruminating, I guess, would be sort of just what I would think about would be worrying, just sort of like yeah. around and around not to an answer. And problem solving would be taking action. Exactly. So, oh, thank yeah, God. exactly. So thinking the same things over and over and again, and really not kind of um, thinking critically, right? And kind of figuring out how to tack from point A to point B, determining, uh, you know, what parts of whatever is going on that you have to accept and the things that you can change. So oftentimes, you know, we, we talk about that in, in DBT, we talk about that fundamental dialectic of 
acceptance and change. And so that can be a great place to start. So differentiating between ruminating and problem solving. And when you are problem solving, being on the lookout for black and white thinking and challenging yourself to find that middle path, that space between all or nothing and, uh, you know, full catastrophe and giving up and that kind of thing. So when you're upset, you know, life can ex- appear in extremes, right? You kind of, you can really kind of narrow your view and get caught in that, that all or nothing world. Do you have that experience ever? I do. Yes. Yeah. And so really challenging yourself in that moment to find that middle space, it can really help uh, your thinking become a lot more flexible. And the more flexible our thinking uh, can be, we can we are actually more resilient then. Um, third one, give yourself the same advice you would give a trusted friend. This is another way of saying self-validate. And we've talked about this over several times over these past weeks, that oftentimes when you're ha- we're having a difficult time or we're thinking about something, we're worrying about something, you know, it's really um, that rumination, right? Rumination can be fueled by judgment and fearing, feeling, you know, bad about ourselves because we've messed up or we've... Um, we then judge ourselves and and call ourselves failures and that kind of thing. But being able to kind of shift gears and challenge yourself to say, okay, what would I say to a friend in this moment is a way to really bring a kindness and a softness and um, an element of self-compassion. This sounds really very, you know, all of these uh are addressing habits that we tend to have uh, around our thinking patterns and attending to them in this way can really create a significant amount of freedom and ultimately um, more happiness for your brain is exactly what the Dalai Lama is talking about with training the mind to be happy. Also, I got that. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. It does make sense. And what I was going to ask is, sorry to interrupt, is that, um, you know, how do you remind yourself to do these things, you know, because I get in it and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I think just like anything, it's like you have to go to the gym, you have to, you know, like put a post it up or do something to say like, Oh wait, you know, be kind to yourself. And I know that sounds right. silly, but, um, I, I really want, you know, I want a secret pill that you can give me that I just like makes me do it. And that's of course crazy, but. Well, you know, I don't think that you're alone in wanting that. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> you know, I think, uh, it was Tony Robbins and maybe other people have said this, but the, the most recent, um, time I heard this was from, Tony Robbins is that is to create rituals for yourself Mm. that we do have rituals, even when we're in a place that we're maybe, uh, say if we're not in a place physically that we want to be, you know, we may have rituals around that in terms of what we reach for, um, you know, what we reach for for breakfast or, Oh, I love uh, my habits. I you like love your habits. Routine. I love routine. So I guess yeah. it's just about sort of shaking that routine. Cause I built that routine. I, yeah. I built the bad routine. So I guess I just have to construct some good ones. Exactly. And it really is tuning into and being honest with yourself. Okay. What is my routine? What is this thing that I do habitually and uh, on the daily that is yielding the result that's making me unhappy. And so attending to this in a very deliberate way, it is hard. It is, this is again, I, and I know I've said this before, much of this is simply stated and deeply challenging to implement. And- Or everyone can, would do it. <laughs> or everyone would do it. And, right. but, but that doesn't make it impossible. It means that you're going to have to utilize, you know, all of the energy and the power in your mind and in your heart and in your soul to attend to these things that are deeply important to you. And, you know, being on the lookout of what's, um, you know, rolling through your mind, you know, uh, that's a great place to build strength because it's, 
one of the very few things in life that we can control. And and not to say that this is all about controlling feelings and that, you know, you could, uh, about making you buttoned up and uh, not have feelings and not being spontaneous and that sort of thing. That's the extreme of, you know, letting your thoughts rule you. That's the other side. But we do want to stay in that middle space. We're going to talk a little bit more about this when we come back. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it welcome back to big wave strong boat i'm your host mary walden here with dean minor uh just want to give you a reminder uh we're here taking your calls at 1-866-451-1451 and again there is a resource list on facebook at big wave strong boat there's references to different websites and books and uh, a PDF on a values exercise. So you might dig that and take a look. Uh, if you happen to take a look, we'd love your feedback um, either on Facebook or sending us an email at bigwavestrongboat at gmail.com. Hey, Mary, uh, yes. we have a caller, actually. Uh, I have Catherine on the line. And uh, are you there, Catherine? Hi, yes, thanks, I'm here. Welcome to the conversation. How are you tonight? I'm doing really good, thanks. Really interesting conversation. I'm so happy to be listening. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, I'm a big big fan, Mary. Um, I wanted to um, kind of talk a little bit about this rumination um, in the mind versus problem solving and share uh, a little, I got kind of an issue I find with myself and wonder if you can sort of speak to it. Um, you know, I, I call it perseverating. Sort okay. of I'll, I'll have an issue or a problem or a question and I, I have this voice kind of going over and over the same issue, right? And in a way, I, I almost go into the problem-solving part, but I, 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 I kind of go off into this sort of, you know, three-act drama of how I, I figure all the answers out and I, I, I create all this great solution, you know, in my mind. Yes, yes, I so hear you. And this is the opportunity to try to be mindful. 
tuning into these thoughts and through the awareness that comes from that, differentiate between thoughts that are really about reviewing the past and what thoughts are those that can lead to action and to move you forward to uh, with what's meaningful to you. What part of what you're thinking about is something from the past that cannot be changed, but instead it's something that must be accepted. And this is our tango with things that can't be changed and our resistance to what we can only accept. And that's what really gets us uh, in that rumination dance. We have to be... Uh, we have to have to be able, we have to be able to target which thoughts can't make any difference to what's really happened in the past. Unless it's something like, okay, maybe there's something that happened that you need to attend to with an apology or an acknowledgement if it's an interpersonal thing. So take that kind of action if that's possible or appropriate. But otherwise, making that differentiation between, okay, what can I change versus what do I have to accept? And the part of this that I think can be so key is that we're so masterful in our mind with the thoughts running over and over in our head. And it, and it can really make a lot of sense in our heads when really we're not making a whole lot of sense. And where that comes out is when we either, A, try to communicate that process to another human to get sort of another set of eyes on what's going on and get some validation from, again, from a trusted friend, someone you can share this vulnerability with of like, okay, I had this tough time. Let me run this by you. Okay. What's the part that I can do something about here? And what's the part that I just have to accept? If you don't feel like you can speak that out loud to someone, even writing it down, can help really bring some wisdom to your thoughts. Because again, it, especially when we get caught up in rumination, that that little pattern, that little dance is really kind of going unchecked, right? And it seems like it's on target when it's in our head. But how many times have you ever sort of had an idea or a thought or something you thought was so amazing and then you tried to share it with someone else and you kind of were working out the details as the words are tumbling out of your mouth and you're thinking, (laughs) oh, okay, wait a minute, that wasn't quite how I saw it in my head. Um, And that's the reason why we can uh, talk, right, and write. That's another dimension of our thinking, which is so helpful. I don't, uh, you know, to, to kind of be able to, um, utilize all three of those mechanisms of thought. Is this hitting it for you? Am I missing something? Yeah, no. In fact, it's, it's so astute because as you were speaking, I was, I was drawn back to times when I was in more of like you know, not meditative state, but, you know, I do yoga or if I'm working out or doing something and I I catch myself because I try to catch myself in those moments of those thoughts and the meandering thoughts and the, you know, if it's perseveration or ruminating or whatever and, Mm -hmm. and catching myself sort of saying, what part of this is helping you? Yeah. Is anything, anything you're saying to yourself in your head right now, is it helping you? Is, it, is there mm-hmm. something you can do about this? And mm-hmm. so often I go in my head, yeah, no, that's, yeah, no. that's done. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Never, we yeah. can't go back there. It's, right. There's nothing else to be done. I've, I've, I've said my piece. They've said their piece. The situation is over. I, 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 there's nothing left to be done here except my acceptance. And I, and I think that's what you were saying right away is just understanding where there has to be ex- acceptance of what you can do, if anything. And, and great if there is, 
And, and I right think now we have I to accept struggled. that we have to go to a break, unfortunately. We're going to take a quick break. If you oh, want to hang geez. on, we're happy to talk to you more. We'd love to. Uh, you're listening Thanks. to Big Waves, Strong Boat, live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers jobsannex.com is your resource for career-minded people. jobsannex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. Jobsannex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with Dean Minert. Uh, again, I just want to remind you we're on Facebook at Big Wave Strong Boat, and you can send us an email at bigwavestrongboat at gmail.com. I am so delighted we have a caller, Catherine, called in. And, uh, you know, something that you said before we went to break, and I'm um, so glad you were willing to uh, hang on to our next segment. Um, you said that you shared that you ask yourself, you stop yourself in your tracks and you say, is this helpful? And that's exactly what we're talking about in terms of retraining the mind. Instead of just getting caught up in the rumination and the repetition, you've taken that moment and you know, it's interesting. It it sounds to me, and you correct me if I'm, if I'm getting this wrong, but it sounds to me, this is, this happens when you're doing yoga or you're sort of having, um, taking a little bit of a break or sort of settling down a little bit. Is that true? Yeah. I think when I, when I find myself in times of actual self care, um, as opposed to sort of I'm in the shower and having conversations with people that aren't there. Right. Um, but when I'm in that, you know, when I'm in that self-care and I'm in it, particularly yoga, I would say, and it's, it's why I'm a big fan of it because it, help, it, it does help me train my mind to be present, stay in the moment, you know, be right where you are. You know, and that is when it, you know, of course, it becomes the most evident when my mind is going off on these tangents, trying to solve problems or think about things that I handled and stressors. And that that's definitely a time when I say to myself, OK, great. Thank you for those thoughts. And let's mm-hmm. just go back to the breath. Well, Mary, isn't that that. mindfulness that we've been trying to sort of like identify and just the awareness of like the insanity talk, right? I mean, when you're in that quiet listening place, you can discern what's the chaos and what's the goods, right? Absolutely. It isn't until we slow down and take a minute to notice what's going on. And Catherine described it so beautifully. She said, oh, okay, 
these thoughts are happening. Thank you so much. You're not needed any longer. You know, I don't really need this, uh, you know, need you a part of this conversation. Um, and that's not helpful or is that helpful? Uh, so that's fantastic. It's exactly what we're talking about. And, um, you know, remember yoga, uh, I don't know how many thousands of years old yoga is, but it really was about training the body and the mind to prepare for meditation. That's what mm. yoga was all about. And, and I, it still is in some circumstances, but also we've sort of athleticized it and, you know, and we buy clothes. It. We exactly. Buy clothes. Exactly. We buy a lot of clothes and, you yeah. know, we've, we put that American stamp on it, but thank you. still, uh, right. Still that, uh, we're still having some, um, there's still some wonderful uh, yoga experiences out there that are creating space for exactly this. So this is just fantastic. It is. Thank, Catherine, thank you so much for calling and contributing. We enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. You're, you're both so great, and I really appreciate it. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Thank you so much, Catherine. Yay for callers, Mary. Yay for callers. We love our callers. I know. It just makes it feel like we're not just talking to you and I. <laughs> exactly. Which is okay, because I love right. talking to you. But then I think like, <laughs> oh, well, I better watch what I say. I didn't ever ask if we're allowed to swear on here, and I've been really trying to be so good. I've been trying to be good, too. Oh, I guess my. we can ask Sal on the break if yeah, we're allowed to I do guess that. So. Right. Um, so, you know, we were before Catherine called in, we were going through a few exercises and, um, you know, I think we have just a few more to cover. And I thought maybe we would just get to the end of that list just because I really do like uh, folks who are listening to have some takeaways. So, you know, uh, as Catherine was even in, and this is a great example of how when she was noticing those thoughts, um, she may have had some feelings attached to those thoughts, right? And because that's oftentimes how uh, feelings that sort of come out of nowhere happen. We have a thought and then we have a feeling response to it. You know, just being able to name the feeling that we're feeling can really uh, take the sting out of it. It really can ground you enough to kind of know what's going on. And actually, there's some research to support this, um, that when we name emotions, particularly intense emotions like anger, fear, upset, it actually has an impact on our brain and can calm the amygdala, which is that reactive center in our brain that really kind of fuels those uh, can be uh, behind those really um, intense feelings. So just being able to name those emotions uh, when they're happening can really help lend to that happy state of mind. You can also balance that, balance that emotional state with logic. And this is not about discounting your feelings, uh, but just don't let the feelings rule the day. It's really that intersection between emotion and emotion mind um, and reason, uh, which is wisdom. It's that overlap between having some emotion and feeling sensibility with that balancing of logic. Mm. And yeah. It's interesting because when you say logic, I thought, well, well, that's what my thoughts are. I'm a very logical person. person. <laughs> but then I just, as you were saying it, I thought like, well, maybe it's feelings disguised as logic. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yes. you can see how that could happen, right? To be like, well, she shouldn't have said that because that's inappropriate. It's like, what a minute. Yes. Yeah. That's, so, that's a great uh, point because w we can really fool ourselves because that brain is very, very sophisticated. And that's why, um, as we were talking to Catherine, that it really can be helpful to write those things down. And you can ask yourself, okay, is this a demonstration of logic or is this emotion um, in motion, right? Mm -hmm. Is this masquerading as logic? Wow. Uh, we have a couple more points we're going to review, but we're going to take a quick break and come back to this. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio.
Stay tuned. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for people with disabilities and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with Dean Minert. And we were just wrapping up just some tips and exercises to help... uh, build that happy state of mind because it's an easy thing to say uh, but I really do want to make sure that people have some you know action you can take around this if this is something that you want to try to implement in your life and you know really the last one and and, and maybe even um, the most important one is to practice gratitude and really kind of um, orient yourself to looking for, you know, times, moments, relationships, interaction, where you can express that to uh, another person, or even just to yourself in your awareness of being grateful for kind of what is working well in your life. Because even in the most dire circumstances, there's something um, to be grateful for, even if it's just the sun coming up, that that can, uh, that can be pretty powerful. And, you know, something, uh, I feel like I'm on a Tony Robbins kick tonight, but (laughs) another thing that he said was when you're grateful, you can't be fearful, which I thought was pretty interesting Mm -hmm. that when you're having gratitude in your heart, you can't, you can't have that fear that, that binds us so much. Yeah, I guess not. Right. No, I mean, 
Hmm. I'd have to think about that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm sure that he's a smart guy, <laughs> but I just would have to know how it sort of fixes for me. I mean, I'm an old school, like Course in Miracles uh, mm-hmm. reader yeah. with Marion Williamson, who I love. And, mm-hmm. you know, that was a, 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 a thing that introduced me, like there's fear and love and only the love is real. And it's like, wait, mm-hmm. how, that's oh, OK. I see what you're saying. So mm-hmm. everything else is fear. Right. Um, uh, but. Yeah. I mean, I think if your pipes are burning gratitude, like what else do you need? I mean, right. that, it's kind of a natural high, I think. But. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, that kind of leads into this other piece that we, I feel like we kind of danced around a little bit um, tonight. And that is um, this notion of having a purpose, you know, and I think that um, because, you know, we started the question tonight with a question of who am I and kind of trying to uh, ground not only just our thinking patterns, as we talked with Catherine about, you know, uh, breaking away from rumination and um, being able to, uh, you know, manage our thoughts more effectively and our, the impact on our feeling state. But it's also this feeling of, you know, having a purpose in life mm-hmm. and figuring out how you want that purpose to play out. And s- sometimes people um, think that they they need to actually figure out the purpose first when really you can, um, you know, take action that like showing gratitude to another person or, you know, do things that feel right to you and then kind of figuring out, okay, does this really, um, what kind of purpose does this reflect? So what are your thoughts about that, Dean? Oh, Mary, I know we have about a minute and a half. I know we're so, we're so So tight tonight. Don't even crack the egg of purpose because, (laughs) (laughs) uh, you know, that bakery is closed for the night. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) Uh, I, it really is something that I would like to talk to you. And I, I, you know, we, it's funny as we sort of plan air quotes, these shows, we think about what we're going to talk about. And Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's, we get off perp off topic, but I think there's just so many layers to discuss that, you know, we don't get through everything. So I would propose that we sort of continue (laughs) this conversation next week and maybe get into sort of purpose. I think so too. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. So we will pick up next week on this discussion about uh, purpose and understanding ourselves from that point of view. We really appreciate you listening tonight. Thanks yay. so much. To, yay, yay. Thanks so much to Catherine for calling in. Thanks for Sal for engineering us tonight. I'm Mary Walden, You're, and this is my, my bud here in Cali. Dean Minert, and you've been listening to Big Waves Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network. Please reach out to us in between shows at, by emailing us at bigwavesstrongboat at gmail.com. And we look forward to talking with you next week. Thanks so much. You've been listening to Big Waves Strong Boat with host Mary Walden. Join us each week as Mary helps cultivate the essential ingredients for a joyful life, including self-respect, self-compassion, resilience, and developing lifelong meaningful relationships here on Big Waves Strong Boat. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.